Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of European of Solace 4. This is the Anbanar multiplayer game run by the community. So, this is the thrift third session. There have been two before this, if you are able to count that high. And things are definitely afoot. I wanted to wait until the end of the month before I started clicking on things, but we are now able to do that. So, let's do a very quick rundown of the various players and where they are playing at the moment. So, starting from the top, we have got Zale in Malaknar. Now, the second test of this is going to be remembering where all these places actually are. So, we've got Malaknar over here. We've got Megama over here. Uh, that is Atos. Then we've got Alone Without AE in Karuvia, which is here. Oh yes. It's really hard to see because it's a grey country in a grey area. But that is indeed Karuvia. Then we've got Ockmill in Adenica. We've got Bjornvar in Conwell, down here. We've got Cold Rage in Thieving Arrow. Thieving Arrow, of course, not being here last week. So uh, Cold Rage is going to have a little bit of catching up to do. We've got the Commander Faceless over in the Gnomish Hierarchy. We've got Darkfighter rising rather epically in Relskulker, and I think we're going to see some really interesting things from them. I think they're going to be definitely a powerhouse going forwards. We've got that guy in Arboran. That guy having been strong arming a little bit against Dark Mill, so we'll see if that comes to any further blows. Then we have got Dominic Imo in Eberthil down here, working also very heavily on getting lots and lots of colonies and things like that up and running. Then we've got Dagakion, which is Envy Crusader, down here as the Greek Elves. Then we've got Helena in Sirenvar. Sirenvar also being very, very ascendant at the moment with a very powerful Wood Elven realm. We've got Vanahar, Holy Victor, if I remember correctly. That is... Nope, that's not those guys. Who is Vanahar? Oh, I remember. Vanahar is these guys. Holy Victor in... Uh, fake India, also known as Rahan. I'm going to go with Rahan. Then we have got Ofdal Kanzad, controlled by Justinian. We've got Vern, which is Kerberos, which are these guys, the other major colonial power. So the colonies are very much split uh, between two players at the moment. Um, Gnomish Hierarchy, I know, wants to go colonial, and then we've also got Mind Boy, but we'll talk about that when we get down to him. Next up, we've got Mind Boy in Netcliff. So Mind Boy is continuing the exodus, trying to escape from the Anbanar powers that basically annihilated the homeland, and I'm sure that he'll be coming back swearing vengeance against Vern, who is the Emperor of Anbanar at the moment. Next up, we've got Oscar in Marhold over here. And then we've got a uh, professional street mugger in the small country, uh, having formerly been known as Bipek. Then we've got Rarely up in Bjarnrik. We've got Rebel Thunder in Arakapun, which is these guys. Then we've got Slurfen coming in as a colonial nation in the Ebori Ebotheli Leech Dens. Interesting that they're allowing colonial nations. That, that's always one thing that I'm always a little bit iffy about letting players do. Um, but there are several other colonial powers in this region. I wonder if there's a plan to make him an actual independent colonial nation, or if he's actually going to be subservient to Eberthil, in which case you've basically got two players playing the same country, which, again, I'm always a little bit iffy about, but these guys don't seem to mind it so much. Next up, we have got Smithington in Anbancost, the very, very wealthy linchpin, really, of this region. Then we've got the Jeheran Exemplars, which is Suriel. And they are this tiny little one-province nation over here, but they tend to be able to expand very, very quickly. And I do see them generally rising to become a major power in the uh, continent down here. Next up, we have got Tanya in Ovlam Azdir, which of course is the Ram Dwarves. But the Ram Dwarves are already kind of butting heads with Relskalker. And at the moment, Rel Relskalker is in a much, much stronger position. Uh, they have left... A bit of an open uh, neutral zone between them, so no huzzah direct conflict just yet. And Ozlam Azdir does still have space to expand in, but that space is rapidly running out. And they are also butting heads with Frozenmore, probably the most powerful of the AI nations still in the game. 
Then we've got the Kaiser down in the Phoenix Empire, which is basically fake Jad. Uh, we've got Rubenair, controlled by Torshin, which is over here. And wow, Rubenair is actually really big. Uh, they are kind of... They're, they're basically the mini Laurent, and they are gobbling up everything with lots of vassals, much like Laurent does. So very much taking the, the Laurentish uh, doctrine uh, forwards. Then we've got Vikes in Yajevgiv, which is the Lake Federation over here. And they are actually a bit bigger than you would perhaps expect. You kind of think it's over there, but they're actually expanding down here and starting to colonize a little bit, taking over some of the territory out there. So I don't know how far they can actually go. So it looks like they can colonize like this segment, but they can't actually get out to here. That is one of the, th the areas that is blocked. Uh, ben, thank you very much for the 32 month three subscription. Very much appreciate the ongoing support there. Thank you. Hey, Valiant. No idea what this looks, no idea what this is, but it looks fun. This is a multiplayer game. It's basically European Universalis 4 in a fantasy setting. So we've got elves, dwarves, centaurs, humans, half elves, orcs, goblins, harpies, ogres, and lots and lots of other stuff. Uh, gnomes, halflings, all competing for power. And many of these different players are playing as those different uh, races as well, even within the area of Anbanar, which would basically be the real world uh, Holy Roman Empire. And this is where a lot of the, the conflict has been going. And I have been trying to keep tabs as much as I can on the uh, goings on on Discord. And there is an incredibly lively multiplayer channel over on Discord at the moment. And there does seem to be a little bit of a North versus South situation arising with the Emperor Vern not making himself very many diplomatic friends. And I do kind of wonder if we're going to start seeing a struggle for power. Because if we take a look at the elections, everyone right now is voting for Wesdam. And that is definitely going to change the dynamics of this region as Wesdam seizes power instead of Vern. So we shall see what that means. In the meantime, we have a couple of people fighting, mostly just AI stomping at the moment. So Malaknar is trying to gobble up Fajic and Stenjurvan. Which I'm guessing is these guys. Actually, no, where are they? Who are you fighting? Oh, it's those. Okay. So yes, they are just gobbling up the last remnants of the little AIs around them. Then we've got Eberthil fighting against Vanail. Oh, that's an interesting one. So trying to kill the elves before they can really get going with the expansion over here. So we've got Alianta that's already established. That's one of the Vern colonial nations. Uh, sorry, Vanail colonial nations. And then we've got a little bit of Vanail expanding out here. I think this is actually a really smart move because if Vanail gets going too much, they become a really big threat. So you want to get them early before they can really get themselves established in the new world. And that is precisely what they are doing. That is a very good move, I think. <clears throat> Then we've got Vanara over in Rahan, currently fighting a couple of people. Again, this is probably... Oh, this is continuing the war against the command. Right, this is the big showdown, and we do have several large battles and several large armies pushing north into the command. Uh, this is very much usually a back-and-forth kind of situation, but at the moment, it looks like Rahan has very much got their uh, target in sight, although there are a lot of command armies moving south as well, and if Rahan leaves themselves too divided up, then that is going to be a bad situation for them. Now, I'm trying to see where his armies actually are. I'm seeing a lot of blue and not a lot of green. Where are your troops? Oh, there they are. So you're currently fighting, I think, a separate war, which is against these guys, uh, just trying to expand his own territories. Not really caring about the death war that's going on up here between the command and his fellows from Rahen. Lots and lots more hobgoblins coming in, but at the moment Rahen just having the sheer amount of manpower required to be throwing at them. But the command does have a significantly better army with 113% discipline, but they're actually technologically behind. I just noticed that. So the command currently sitting on a tech of 8, whereas these guys are mostly on a tech of 9. And 9 is a big one. 9 is getting you a lot more tactics, and I think that's why the Command is currently losing these fights, even though they're coming in with a ton more uh, morale 
and a lot more troops, but it does look like they're going to win this fight on the shoulders of the previous one, and the commanders actually managed to catch up a big chunk on the tactics, and there we go, command coming out on top of that one, maybe being able to start fighting back, especially if these guys are not answering the call aggressively enough. And we shall see what happens. In fact, the command is trying to sneakily take some territories from around the back. But at the moment, I would definitely say the command is on the back foot, simply because so much of their territory is under occupation. We do have green flames. We have got Sinvar versus Marhold. So that is going to be a conflict between these two. Marhold, of course, being the humans who can move into the Dwarven territories if they complete the tunnel between the old Dwarven Hold, which is their capital, and then the tunnels of the Spine. Um, it does look like this is a non-conflict. This is Sinvar going for Stolbor. Stolbor, I guess, was one of Marhold's allies. They were indeed. But it doesn't look like Marhold is particularly interested in answering this call to arms. Marhold coming in with a lot of cavalry. They must have some serious cavalry bonuses. They, whoa, yeah, 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 they do. Plus 70% cavalry combat ability. Poland, eat your heart out. 70%. That's mental. Have you taken Noble Academia? Of course you have. Which is going to allow you to have more cavalry to infantry ratio. It does indeed. So there you go. Oh, more blue flames. We have got Arkmil from Adenica. Also now joining the fight against Sinvar. And this seems to be escalating quite a bit. So we've got the Phoenix Empire and Sinvar versus Adenica and Marhold. And also, who's this? Hammerhome. So we've got the Dwarves of Hammerhome jumping in as well. But they did call in the Phoenix Empire, so this is going to be a big war going on for Kanor right now. So Sinvar with lots and lots of troops marching in. Sinvar, I'm assuming, has quite a lot of manpower. They do indeed, 87,000. Marhold sitting on 45 right now. And then Adenica at 10. So Adenica just took a bit of a pasting uh, from the forces of... Arboran. So their forces are going to be somewhat weakened, which is unfortunate, because Adenica is another one that can bring a lot of cavalry power. Not as much as Marhold, admittedly, but they can still bring a lot to this. But they're up against the Behemoth, that is the Phoenix Empire, although, although, Phoenix Empire does not have a lot of manpower. They are kind of tapped. So once these armies start suffering some casualties, they are not going to be able to do very much in this. So this is really going to be down to how the elves manage to do. Although this is, of course, an elven army, they are going to have higher start discipline than uh, the others. But Adenica and Marhold's sheer cavalry capability might be enough to overcome that 10% discipline advantage. Especially if these guys have discipline of their own. You do not. Your morale is 4.7. Your morale is 4.3. So Marhold also has the morale advantage. And we do have Hammerhome, the Dwarves coming in and starting to siege some stuff from the Elves. And then we've got Adenica over here with also 100% discipline, 4.7 morale. So the human forces having higher morale and probably higher combat capabilities up against Sinvar's weirdly higher uh, manpower. And they're also up against Karuvia stepping in. So Karuvia, of course, being another of the players, but it doesn't look like Karuvia's taken sides in the player versus player conflict. I do kind of wonder if Adenica and Marhold are actually planning to fight this one or if they're just letting them do it. And I do hope Kaiser is not listening in, because he shouldn't be, because this is a player war. So it does look like Adenica's armies are here hanging out with Marhold. I do wonder if they are talking to each other about this conflict. I'm just going to scroll down and take a look. And actually, no. It doesn't look like they are. Nope, they're just in one big channel, so maybe not planning to do much 
to coordinate. They're probably just staying here to make sure that the Wood Elves don't get tempted to go after Marhold. And only go for Stalbor. Perhaps there was a diplomatic agreement already made here. But I, I don't know how wise this is, letting the Elves just grow and grow and grow. Like, the main malice that the Elves have in this game is manpower. And if you let them seize a lot of territory, then that becomes less and less of a problem, as we saw last time with Jad, where just the sheer size of the nation just lets them do pretty much what they want to do. So maybe trying to curtail growth into Escan, which is some really, really high development regions, and especially when it gets built up, might not be the wisest. So it does look like Stalbor have peaced out. They have peaced out against the elves, and the elves are now moving into Marhold. So this was not just a proxy war against one of the AIs. No, this was knocking out one of Marhold's allies before going after Marhold themselves. So it does look like Adenica, even though they are sitting here taking a little bit of attrition, and Marhold are pretty happy just sitting back and letting... I'm just going to click on someone else, try and clear those, there we go. Uh, and letting the elves suffer the attrition, especially as they're moving around in these massive, massive stacks. Um, but again, this is just going to be manpower, 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 manpower. And the elves are starting to take this province pretty quickly. They're at 0%, no movement as yet from Adenica and Marhold, but we'll just stay here and watch for a little bit. Um, I was going to say, I wonder if they're waiting for other allies to come in, but the only other allies that could feasibly come in would be Phoenix Empire, though it doesn't look like the Phoenix Empire is particularly interested in stepping in. And yes, I know the elves have much, much bigger stacks at the moment, but whereas they have numbers, I would say that quality is on the side of Marhold and Edenica. Like, that 70% combat ability, especially because we are still early on. Fire is not yet king. Guns? Sorry, um... Uh, cavalry still reign supreme, I would say, at this stage, especially with your 70, 70% 70 combat capability. The Mural of Castellar, news from Alantir, has arrived, spread widely by the Order of Chronicles and proclaimed by Telemite. So it looks like the secrets of Castellos being possibly not alive. Oh no, this is just talking about the, the explosion. This is not about Castellos yet. Interesting. Interesting. Because I know that was something which people were wondering, like, why has this not happened yet? I don't understand why Coronite still has not become a, uh, a faith rising. But it hasn't. Twenty-eight percent. They are taking five percent Patrician. Five percent from Forbiddance, which I think must be a m spell. Yeah, Realm Magic Field of Forbiddance. And then the Siege itself doing plus one. Oh man, can you imagine Kobold Mages? All of the attrition that Kobolds do plus that. Unfortunately, there is a five percent maximum to attrition, which I, I do kind of feel like they should get rid of because there are so many nations in this that have stacking attrition, that five percent blocking at 5% seems a bit harsh. But it does mean that your opponents are basically always going to take 5% attrition. And that is going to count down against the elves, because I did say before, the elven Achilles heel is manpower, and they have lost like 15,000 already. 20, 30,000, in fact, to attrition. But it does look like the fort of Medelay is going to fall before too long. They might be waiting before a siege in, say, the woods, uh, which would give the defender that die roll advantage. So it does look like the siege of Medelay was simply about trying to inflict casualties, which they're still doing. Like, this huge stack is still just sitting there. Not the greatest management of manpower. Like, we're still relatively early in the game. It's 1514. Manpower is a resource that you kind of need to cherish. Although, here is another question. If we take a look at professionalism, Marhold has none. Adenica, that's not Adenica. Where is Adenica? That's, oh, they've, wait, have you formed Elnor? No, there's Adenica. 
Um, has not enough. Sinvar has lots. So they can actually tap into even more manpower, 27,000 at a time, by tanking down professionalism. So the elves do have quite a lot still in the bank before problems start to arise. Now, because that seems to be in a bit of a stalemate situation, I want to take a look at the war for the command. Because the command are starting potentially the last time we checked to start fighting back, but it actually doesn't look like that's true anymore. Command forces were too far isolated from the big battles going on at the moment. We are seeing some incursions now going into the tunnels and the caves, which, yes, is going to cause a lot of attrition, but is also where really where you want to start taking the fights because of the massive bonuses. But we can see that the Rahan forces have lost 357,000 casualties to the commands 250,000, 11,000 to attrition, 71,000 to attrition uh, because most of this has been sieging down command territories. So the command getting the better out of this manpower wise, do they still have any left? They have a little bit. They do also have quite a lot of professionalism. How are these guys doing? Yeah, these guys, they're not actually in the war. Um, oh no, they still got a bit. So yeah, could happen. And it looks like the dwarves were once again routed. They are now going for Nymphalia. And Sinvar is offering peace. Demanding a lot of territory. <laughs> An awful lot of territory. Sindrin, thank you very much for the gifted sub to the Korot. The Korot, congratulations on the gifted sub. Thank you very much for that, Sindrin. Very generous. Appreciate it. That guy started the war as a proxy war. Uh, that guy being an Adenica. Oh, sorry, not Adenica, Arboran. Um, I mean, possibly. We have seen malice between Adenica and Arboran, though at the moment they are, are allied. After the brief conflict last time, they did make an alliance almost immediately afterwards. Although, as was said in Torshin's overview of the game, as he does every week, um, after the fact, he does like a political overview. In fact, I should link those. Those are very interesting for those of you who are following this. Um, he was saying that seems more like a marriage of convenience as opposed to a true alliance. Uh, let's go see, find this. Okay, so this is the overview from Hello and welcome to last week where you can get an idea of the different stance of the different nations at the moment. Oh, the players wrote it in game chat. Yeah, unfortunately I can't read it after the fact. Definitely one of the annoyances I have with observer mode. Anyway, it does look like this siege is going to come down soon. Manpower is at 85,000. I think they may have tapped it once. Maybe not. Gaining 1,100 per month. Currently losing 3.4 thousand. This fort does not have the Ritual of Forbiddance. And these guys are now merging their forces. Considering an attack, but it looks like they've backed off. Do they have a mage in charge? Marhold even has a mage. So they have cavalry, massive cavalry bonus. And a mage who is currently in charge. That's frankly a maging. Isn't Ribbonair trying to become Laurent 2.0? Oh, yeah, 100% they are. Oh, he's casting some spells. Don't worry. Being in observer mode means that me clicking on stuff doesn't do anything. So Ribbonair is drilling at the moment, getting a little bit of professionalism up and running, making a lot of money. Very, very wealthy, controlling the, the wine lords. But that's not where the interest is. The interest is over here, and I find it really bad that these guys are just sitting here taking attrition. Like, why? Why Why are you doing this? This just seems like bad organization. They're taking 2.5% attrition just for sitting here. Like, if you're going to prepare to jump into a fight, fine. But you've been sitting behind your line of forts. 
Is it because you're daring them to attack you? Because it's forests? In which case, let the forts do that. Because then you might also get the river crossings. Although they have a maneuver of four. You have a maneuver of six, so you will get the river crossing. I assume nobody is playing Laurent. No, they're not. Uh, they're playing Rubenair instead. So there were a couple of rules. You're not allowed to play as Goward, Laurent, or Vanail. To encourage some of the smaller nations around to actually participate and to make sure that the new world doesn't just fall to a single player again. Because it's basically impossible to stop Vanail once they get going over there. But at the moment, they seem to be just staring at each other across the border, just taking these massive chunks of manpower loss. You're losing 5,000. Oh, thinking about a move there, but deciding to abort, ultimately. And instead moving up to Beggarstead. Being a nice flat open area. But they would have to take Eswick before taking Sarwick. So they're just taking territory right now. So the gnomes are getting everything then. No, the gnomes haven't even started colonizing. Duran's out there. Vern is out there. Everthil's out there. And Mindboy is out there. Plus the nations which started in this region. And in fact, if we take a look at the Jahiran exemplars, like I said, these guys do tend to grow very, very quickly. Um... Trying to think why. They probably have really good settler growth. Actually, they don't. I mean, they have some. I wonder if they have some kind of special mechanical and grow. Because I usually see them take over this whole island. Although I would imagine that Neckliff would have a thing or three to say about that. Meanwhile, the dwarves of Hammerholm marching bravely forth. Probably just to have the elves immediately squish them. But so far, this fight definitely seems to be a case of hurry up and wait. Is anyone playing the New World Wood Elves? Yes, there are a couple of players playing. Oh, the the Wood Elves? Uh, is that what these guys are? I don't know what race these guys are. Ruinborn. I think these are all Ruinborn, to be honest. Bias Carvo. They have changed name I think yeah they used to be Malignar so they have formed a new nation they are still a battle king <laughs> and they are still probably going to be pretty scary at fighting mm, not massively Sorry, I want to keep an eye over here in case this happens. We have a battle, so it is 52,000 elves against 52,000 Adenica and Marhold. At the moment, Adenica and Marhold were causing a lot more damage. 2,000 damage against the 300. So the Wood Elves getting absolutely stomped. The Wood Elves do have another 30, 40,000 troops to march in. But they're going to arrive too late, which does mean that Marhold's forces are going to get that extra blip of morale. And then 2,500 losses at a time. Adenica and Marhold's cavalry forces just proving way too freaking strong. And that is a Wood Elf stack wipe. The first battle has been lost. And Adenica and Marhold have held. Adenica now moving carefully forth to try and retake some of this territory. Earn back a little bit of the uh, initiative. And now we can see that Sinvar has lost 130,000 troops to the 60,000. Most of that 60,000 I would also wager to have been uh, Hammerhome. No, Hammerhome's only 6,000. Oh no, sorry, that's the number of troops they have. 125,000 losses against 48,000. There we go. And of that, 33,000 were Hammerhome. So we're not going to count that. So they've only actually lost 14,000 troops against the 125 that Sinvar have. And that was an absolute butchering by the horse lords. But of course, Sinvar. Sinvar has a lot in the tank. They can recover pretty darn quickly. 
52,000 manpower still. They have not tapped their professionalism. And they probably don't want to. I'm not sure that they're going to consider it worth their while to tap professionalism. Is this war going to be that important to them? Doubtful. <laughs> the Horse Lord simply said, Nay! I like it.